Let's take a look at central web authentication. So this has a really nice fallback that allows us to implement guest access for authentication. And this is great in a scenario where the user uh, doesn't support 802.1x, and they're also uh, not a device that we've seen before. So it's maybe something where it wouldn't be appropriate to do MAC authentication bypass. Um, alternatively, you may prefer this to MAC authentication bypass because we're still using a username and password to connect. So in my humble opinion, I think it would be a bit more secure. Um, users are gonna be automatically redirected to this authentication page. This is gonna happen with an HTTP redirect. So remember that we basically want to authenticate everybody using 802.1x. This is the most secure method. However, if they don't support it, we can fall back to centralized web auth. The idea here is that either for wired or wireless clients, maybe they failed to authenticate through .1x, then maybe we tried to do MAB, didn't know the MAC address, and we go, okay, we'll give them guest access. We'll drop them into a limited VLAN, we're gonna allow them to pass HTTP traffic, and as soon as they do, we'll redirect that HTTP traffic to a portal. We'll get them to that portal, we'll authenticate them just using a traditional web page, and this is still gonna serve the kind of the same purpose of what we we're doing with everything in 802.1x and leveraging E. So central web authentication supports both wireless and wired devices. The layer one isn't really important. What is important is the fact that they weren't able to authenticate. What we'll do is go ahead and grant them access to the network, get them an IP address, gateway, DNS server, and so forth. But when they try to connect out to the internet, we're gonna capture that request and we'll perform a redirect that steers that HTTP traffic into a portal that lives on the ICE server. That portal is gonna be hosted on something called a, a, a PSN, which is just a, a particular uh, service that we can run within our ICE cluster. And this is where the authentication is gonna be handled. Um, once those authentication credentials come in, uh, we can go ahead and process them. We can still leverage Active Directory or whatever's necessary on the back end. But once we authenticate that user, we can leverage change of authorization and we can set up that network access device so that it has an appropriate VLAN, an appropriate access list for that particular user. Additionally, you can perform what's called local web authentication, and that's where we're just doing the authentication locally on the wireless LAN controller or an individual switch. So looking at CWA, the initial authorization assignment is gonna restrict traffic. So we're trying to bring somebody in the network, we can't authenticate them with .1x, ah, fine, whatever. We'll give them an IP address, we'll put them in a limited VLAN, uh, and then we'll wait for them to do some web traffic. Once we see that HTTP traffic, it's gonna be redirected to a portal, and the idea is that they would authenticate at that portal, and then once they authenticate, they can get the appropriate level of access to the network environment. Uh, here's what the client looks like. Uh, we've got the client attaching, they send an initial packet, and we go, hmm, this is a new user, try to do a MAB request, and perhaps a MAB request fails. Why? Because we couldn't find anything. But our policy says go ahead and continue if a MAB user is not found. What do we continue to and fall back to? Well, we're gonna give a limited access control list, and we're gonna perform URL redirect. Why is that? Well, as soon as they try to reach out to the internet to go to a site such as Google, we'll see the connection come in, our switch is gonna grab it and steer it into the ICE login page. This is what exists on our PSN within the ICE cluster. Once they hit that, that page, they'll provide username and password. If they authenticate successfully, COA can force re-authentication, we'll perform an acknowledgement, and here's Remember auth Z is authorization, where auth is authentication. That authorization component happens, right? It's change of authorization, and we can push down a new access list. This access list allows full access, whereas the first ACL was limited access. From the end user perspective, it's nothing too fancy. They go ahead and join the network. Maybe it seemed a little bit slow to come up, but it seems to be working now. They typed in Google, and hmm, what is this? It says sponsored guest portal. Um, what they're gonna do here is set up a username and password, and they can go ahead and authenticate. Once they authenticate, um, we'll go ahead and be able to tie into AD and push down appropriate permissions. So leveraging CWA within a wireless LAN controller, um, there's a couple of steps involved. We'll go to the wireless LAN, and with the layer two, 
set to open, we can en enable MAC filtering and we can tie into AAA radius. We can also set up what's called a redirect ACL. This is the traffic that should be redirected. Um, to set up layer two security and enable MAC filtering, it's pretty straightforward. Here we see layer two security, uh, it's currently set to none. We've got a drop down box. We can select through various options. And additionally, we can limit access based on MAC address. When we want to authenticate on the back end of AAA servers, we simply define them here. Again, we've got our servers in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, down the top, and we've got different IP addresses and ports, possibly, for authentication and accounting services. Typically, we'll find that it'll be the same IP address, different port numbers. Here, under the Advanced tab, again, they're just selecting that Allow AAA Override. Does anybody remember what that was for? It gave us the ability for the dynamic uh, attributes that are being pushed down to override existing attributes that are configured on the switch port. So if there's an ACL in place already, the new ACL can override that. Uh, here's what a redirect ACL may look like. Um, when we talk about redirection, we're saying, hey, firewall, in this case, hey, wireless end controller, when you see traffic that is going from this source to this destination, what we actually want to do is steer it into our ICE server. And we want it to specifically land within that portal. So we gave it an intuitive name, CWA redirect. And here we can classify traffic that should be steered into that uh, portal. So the configuration consists of a few steps. We'll verify that the guest portal is working, verify guest authentication information and our identity source sequence, you know, where are those guest accounts going to be looked up. Uh, we can do verification of our MAB rule. We can do configuration of authorization profiles for CW redirect, configuration of authorization uh, rules for redirection, and then we can configure the authorization rules for the guest access. So starting off under identity management, you've got a tab here called identity source sequences, and we'll basically give it a name. This is the name of our list, guest portal sequence. Here you'd have an available list of different AAA servers. And then what we can do is take those and move them over to the right. And this is where we'll process them in order. Where are we going to look for those user accounts? We can verify configuration of the MAB authentication role here. So notice our authentication policy set is for MAB, and it supports both wired and wireless. And we see if auth fails, reject. If user is not found, continue. So we get a MAC address. We try to look it up based on using that MAC address's username and password. If they're like, that user doesn't exist, we go, OK, well, let's look further through our policy. The next thing that we'll jump to is what's called a CWA redirect. And the idea here is we go, OK, well, for starters, we're going to allow access to the network. However, and then under common tasks, we check the box for web redirect. Specifically, there's different types, local versus central. We'll use CWA or central. Here's that access list that we referenced a couple slides ago, CWA redirect. And then here we've got a value uh, for the sponsored guest portal. So here, just looking at the authorization rule itself, you can see that CWA authentication is being tied to network access use case equals guest flow. And with redirect, we do network access use case equals host lookup. 